So justice says, we all deserve hell. Now how do people know you've done some stuff that qualifies? Listen, somebody said one sin qualifies you for hell. I said, that's too much. I said, a point five. <laughs> point, point, point zero zero two qualifies us. The moment you took your second breath, that was all grace. When you came out of the womb and you took grace. Justice says we should all go to hell. And people know they deserve hell. Raise your hands. Okay. All right. That's called justice. And that's being totally fair. All right? So we're on our way to hell. Mercy sees us walking to hell. Mercy says, do you need a ride? Come on, talk to Mercy jumps in because mercy is a road blocker. Mercy holds back what you deserve. What do we deserve? Hell. Mercy jumps in and says, put on your brakes. Because the love of God, the mercy of God jumps in and says, I'm stopping you from going to what you deserve because I hold back what you deserve. So mercy turns you around. And we praise God we don't have to go to hell. But then here comes grace. Doing a, a somersault out of the air. And Grace steps in and says, Now, mercy held back what you should have got. Grace says, I'm going to give you what you shouldn't have got. Not only do you get out of hell, but you get to go to heaven. So Grace gets us a ticket to heaven. So justice demands a payment. And for years in the Old Testament, God was accepted. Partial payment. You ever call the bill collector? They kept calling you and you try to work something out. You said, can I just put something on it? And God was taking goats and bulls, come on, and, and, and doves and wheat offering and grain offering. He was taking all these substitutions. He really wasn't being satisfied. He was working with us. So he's got to send someone who will completely satisfy. Jesus comes to pay our debt. So we have two issues here because Everything that was created was created by God and for God to glorify God, including Jesus Christ. Our main purpose in life, I don't care where you are, what your occupation is, is to glorify God. So when Jesus comes, guess what his main purpose is? To glorify God. I'm going to repent you right here. I know we think it was to save man. His first call and first responsibility is, I've come to glorify God, and as a result, man will be saved. So there's two issues here in this text, because God needs a payment, and the sinners don't have the money. So Jesus says, i got two dilemmas. My dad wants his money, and my brothers are in jail. God needs to be satisfied and my brothers and sisters need to be set free. I've got to satisfy him first. Satisfying God first satisfies us. Take this rule in life. Listen, satisfying God always will satisfy your situation later. Don't try to satisfy yourself first. Satisfy God and let everything else work out. Jesus is in his prime. In the Old Testament, when you would have your greatest sacrifice, you would take a lamb and you would slay it when the lamb was in its prime. Not too young and not too old. Y'all still here? Jesus is sacrificed in the prime of his life at 33 and a half. All right? He's got to go to the cross. And the lamb in the Old Testament could have no blemishes, no scars, no defects. In order for Jesus Christ to die on the cross first, he's got to live for us first perfectly, completely perfectly. So Christ has got to make the payment for us, and the person who makes the payment has to have perfect credit. Perfect credit. No sin, no flaw. The cross, Kim, is the cash register. This is where the transaction is going down. This is the sin register. This is where the vertical and the horizontal meet. This is when God comes down for man. Man does not go up. Man going up is religion. It's dead work. This is the cross. This is where the register is. So all of our sins show up. So God takes out his register, his calculator, and this is incredible. 
He adds up all the sins of man. Now, I know you think you got an Apple Mac computer and you got great memory, but listen, I want you to understand this. God has to recall, God has got to get billions and billions and billions of people and then multiply that by billions and billions and billions of sins, sins, trespasses, trespasses, iniquities, and they all will show up and then he hits total. He itemizes it. He tallies it. You know that long register receipt you get when you be shopping. Listen, can you imagine this big tally of sins that showed up on the cross? And all this takes place in just three hours. This is incredible. And Because I'm thinking, how in the world, what type of computer does God have where he can download onto Jesus every single person all their sins in three hours. Steve Jobs, come on. Bill Gates, you ain't got nothing on God's memory and God's power. Three hours, and you know how we get when we're downloading stuff on our computer. What do we do? We do what God did. We turn. We walk away. Because God could not stand to look at his son be infected with viruses, diseases, pornography, hormone, and homosexuality. These lies Because he cannot let us leave the courtroom just because he loves us. Oh, God. So he's got to send his son, his best son, his favorite son, who has perfect credit, to die for us. And Jesus writes a check for our sins. Who does Jesus write the check to? Is everyone, is everyone clear on this? Jesus writes the check to who? God, because God needs a visa payment. He doesn't take He doesn't take visa mastercard. He only takes blood, perfect blood. He takes the blood. Who wrote the check? Who's he writing to? Who's he writing for? <laughs> the check doesn't clear. Friday, nothing. <laughs> Saturday, nothing. Because you know banks don't do no transaction. We go. <laughs> but Sunday, come on. The proof that the check cleared on an empty tomb. Because Buddha wrote a check. He's still dead. His check bounced. Come on, come on. Muhammad wrote a check, but his check bounced. He's still dead. Come on. There's been so many folks. gives us a new robe, new shoes. There's a limousine waiting for us outside. It's taking us, come on, taking us to a fine dining restaurant. It's taking us to a mansion. Because Jesus over, I think he overwrote the check or something. Because not only did we get out of prison, but we get all this grace. 